The Monte Carlo is cursed. Stick around. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and now the Monte Carlo is probably not cursed. I'm probably cursed and let's get into why. If you come down here, you might notice that's not the junkyard six liter. More about that in a second though. So what all has happened? Over the last couple weeks, it has been a complete and total failure as it were and on top of it i got covid in the middle of all of it and uh, i've got a dog going through cancer treatments so it's just been an absolute nightmare but it starts with the monte carlo and just want to get this thing knocked out and out of here we had the six liter in here everything was bolted up wired up uh, had our p01s everything looked good the thing wouldn't run and that was a different issue cranked over made good oil pressure uh, everything looked good. Sounded like it was out of time. Uh, but then, it kills our MPVI3 interface. The one that I used to tune everything is now officially dead. I got to send it back into HP Tuners. They've got to do their magic, transfer my 50 plus credits off of that to another device and get me back on the road. Well, I did a little digging, turns out there was a power short to ground that was causing a basically a back feed. Now, listen, you can have a short without smoke and without it burning everything down. And a lot of it has to do with whenever there's loads applied and, and where it's at. It was in the back somewhere, I still haven't found it. I've isolated it, but this has a battery relocation in the back and it goes to a shutoff switch, then comes forward to a lug uh, inside the door over here. And it's somewhere in that section. So I checked from that section forward. Of course, there's going to be resistance readings going forward because you got light bulbs and stuff in the chain. But that section shouldn't have any resistance readings. The fact that it did uh, is part of the issue. Now, let me tell you, another big indicator that this was the problem was the fact that whenever I was trying to hook exhaust up to my uh, headers, it would spark. It was getting ground. Electricity was discharging much like a static discharge. That's not normal, okay? That's not normal. So found that, isolated that, but in the process, uh, jerked the P01 harness off and bought an Aces jack Jackpot. And if you haven't checked out the Aces Jackpot, it is uh, in its base form, 850 bucks. Base form's drive-by cable, no transmission control. But it comes with a five inch display and all the harnesses you need. And these are, what I'm talking about, we got a bunch of harnesses with sub harnesses that that plug into the motor. I'll do a review on that later, talk more about it, because there's some interesting stuff on the software side that if you did not know about, might cause you some confusions and headaches and stuff like that. Let's just say that the six liter had a, uh, or has a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 NA cam in it. So you go into the settings on there, the wizard, and it gives you stock, mild, or race cam. Well, stage three is not mild. So I chose race cam and it jacked up the VE table and made it really lean. Some other issues that I was running into is one of the headers. The headers I had were for the 72 Corvette whenever we were going to swap the motor into that. They just did not fit on the G-Bike platform so I ordered a new set of headmans. And the oil pan, the F body style oil pan, the aluminum one was hitting the K member. So there lies our problem. I jacked the motor up with the cherry picker, crawl underneath the car, swap the oil pan, and I'm oh, bent over that thing with my back on the cherry picker and uh, got it swapped out. And then found out that the timing issue was actually me forgetting to adjust the rockers. Dumb, dumb. And, and to, 
to my defense, I assembled the top end of the motor right after mom passed away. And so I just was not in the right frame of mind. Uh, it was one of those things where I was like, I need something to distract me from what's going on. And it was too distracting because even though I was working on a motor, I wasn't thinking about what I was doing. And honestly, I should have gone back, checked everything, and verified that I'd done that. So once I tightened down the rock arms, luckily there's no damage there. Uh, just the rock arms were just loose. Valves weren't opening up. It, funny enough though, I had two cylinders that the intake manifold had gas pulled in them. So luckily I'd taken the plugs out. I cranked it over, let shoot all the gas out. Everything's good. Get everything buttoned back up, fire it off. It cranks up, fires up for the fire up cycle, you know, up to 1100 RPMs or whatever, then it dies. Do it again, dies. And I can't figure out what's going on. Well, it goes back to that cam setting on the ACES jackpot. Whenever you go through the cams, you've got a base table in there that says, this is the VE of the car that's calculated off the displacement and all that jazz and your, your fuel injector sizing. It puts that into a table whenever you put that in. Then whenever you select it, it populates three tables after that, stock, mild, race cam, and generates those tables as a percentage of the base table. In fact, the stock one matches the base table, and then the mild one has been adjusted, and then the race one has been adjusted more. The race cam setting has the VE table lowered by like 40%. So listen, I understand the thought process behind it. Your VE table for a race cam is going to have less efficiency at idle. So up until 2000 RPMs, it draws less air. Everywhere else, so it makes more air. It shifts the whole table, and what they're doing is leaning on the ability of closed loop uh, to make the adjustments. So if you are working with one of these, never choose the race cam option. Go with the mild or even stock. So I put the stock one in there and um, it fired up. Then I needed airflow, you know, on the throttle body adjustments. But suddenly it's get, it gets hard to crank. I'm like, oh man, the starter's dying. Either that or the starter's just too hot. And it goes from getting hard to crank to not cranking at all. Starter's still working, it's just not cranking. So, when I was swapping the oil pan, the pickup tube did not get fully seated. It was just barely cockeyed in the oil pump and whenever it comes to drawing up oil or air, air's a lot easier to move than oil. So, the motor ran dry and seized up. The saving grace on that is it was only at, you know, 200 RPMs for the most part whenever it locked up. Should be able to tear it apart, throw new bearings in it, and, and be good to go. Have to check the crank surfaces, stuff like that. But it's not like it was running at 1,000 RPMs, 2,000, 3,000, whatever, and it locked up at that rate. And I'll be honest with you, part of why that happened, A, was my dumbness on doing that. I should have just jacked the motor all the way up. I, was, I didn't want to unhook everything. You know, I've been working on this thing for weeks chasing gremlins. I just want it done. Uh, but the oil pressure gauge, the factory one did not work with this harness. This, this uh, setup has a fourth gen style pressure, oil pressure hookup. I had an auto meter oil pressure gauge in there, but it was hooked up to the factory wiring and not the aftermarket wiring. I should have taken the time, hooked it up to the aftermarket wiring that I set up that isolates all the factory wiring. So the ECU on there right now is literally the only thing on this circuit. It has got a power switch and a starter button on it. So there's no other electronics from the car, from all the previous uh, butchery that's been done to this car affecting our vehicle. Uh, but because of that, I didn't have an oil pressure gauge. I went off the knowledge that, hey, I've been cranking this over and seeing 30, 40 PSI on this just from cranking. So I've got good oil pressure. 
If I had an oil pressure gauge, I would have noticed that the oil pump was not picking up oil uh, and saved myself locking up the six liter. So my mistake. But the big thing, and, and what I always tell my students and I tell the people that work for me is mistakes are going to be made. We just have to learn from those mistakes. We, you know, and whenever I put that pan on this motor, rest assured, this oil pickup is seated properly. That is not going to be an issue. But that brings us to the GM Performance LS3 that we have in here now. And essentially what I did was I got mad and just went out and bought a crate motor. I want this to be done for the season. I want this out of here for the season. I've got other stuff to work on this winter that's more important. But it also gives us an awesome platform whenever spring or summer comes around next year that we can work on. This is a Corvette LS3, you know, a 435 horsepower motor. And it's brand new. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. My favorite motor that GM's ever put out. And so... It's all kind of a win-win situation as far as I'm concerned. And the six liter is going to have a life beyond this because our buddy Justin who races motorcycles has been wanting to build a high compression six liter. So why not just give it to him? We got a nice NA cam in there. Uh, let him tear it down. It's got, you know, new rings, uh, new crank bearings, new cam bearings. Those might need to be replaced now but hopefully the cam survived and, and let him build that. But that's where we're at. Uh, our our um, Leash Electronics Street Strip module has shown up. I'm going to do a separate video on that. We're not installing that right now. That's going to be a summer or springtime project with this car. But it goes to show you just how important it is because this car does have these wonky shorts in it that are causing other issues. Uh, and then I'll do a video, as I said, on the uh, ACES stuff. And specifically, I want to do a video on the software because software is a little bit hard to understand or navigate around. But for the price, you can't beat it. Listen, I've got quite a bit to do here to get this thing ready to fire up. Uh, specifically, I'm hoping my bracket's clear. Uh, I'm guessing they're not going to, so I'm going to have to move some stuff around. But listen, you guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.